Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Servant Channel. And today's lesson, we're doing Psalms 103 and 104. If you're new to this, you just clicked on this. This is, this is a Bible study channel where I go through the King James Bible. I do it in order. I don't skip anything as God commands. You know, we're to... Uh, uh, teachers of the word are to teach all of the word. That's the commandment. If you don't teach all of the words, it is the same thing as taking away from the word of God. So that tells us, you know, as people learning God's word, that we're to learn all of God's word as well, not just the parts that make us feel good. We got to learn even the parts that make us feel bad. And we study it so that the parts we don't know, we know. We learn them. We start to understand them. And that's why we, there's Bible studies. And that's why I do this channel. Is to help people learn the Bible faster and easier than how I had to learn to do it. Which is the hard way and over many decades. Um, so I just want to pass my knowledge on. That's what God commands us to do is teach the next generation you know, so they don't have to do life the hard way. You know, that's what we're that's how we're supposed to live. That's how mankind progressed and got better. But that that's being flushed away with feminism coming, you know, stronger and stronger on the scene. You know, women trying to wait till they're thirty or something years old. Then they say we're ready for a family. It's like, but you're already married. You know. It's, uh, you wonder why marriages don't work out. Over 80% are failing in, of marriages is because the woman's already married because she's not a virgin. Stuff like that. I mean, this, there's a lot of truths in God's word. It's not being taught. It hurts our feelings. Uh, a lot of women don't want to hear the rules that God has for them. And men don't want to hear the rules either because they like the flamboyant lifestyle that they can live in modern times. But our societies are degrading. They're not advancing because the next generation is not being taught what the previous generation learned. And so we're actually now declining. And... The only thing progressing is people's ability to play video games, it seems. Uh, it seems like more and more people are getting into that, and I understand it. It's better, better than trying to just watch TV, hear your little interactive, and you can't afford to do anything else, so. But. Also, we got to remember all those who are suffering from Hurricane Helene, was it Helene, Helena? I don't know how they actually wanted to say it. I think it's Helene. Um, I think the last I read, it said, uh, so far 60 people have been reported dead from, you know, through five states of this. So we gotta remember those families and also we got to pray for the ones that have passed. Mostly praying that they were right with God. We always have to we always have to be ready. As the Bible commands, be ye ready for ye not know when the master of the house cometh. Always be ready. No one's no no one's guaranteed 20 seconds must less 20 years. You know Anything can happen. All sorts of things can happen. But yeah, we really got to pray for those families because, you know, it's not that they lost, just lost loved ones. They also lost their homes. They lost, you know, family heirlooms. They lost livestock. They lost pets. They, you know, They, uh, some places will take years 
for him to get back to some type of a normal. Something's going to take weeks to even get electricity back up. I never understood why they don't bury all the power lines. I mean, the areas that got the mudslides and stuff, that's, uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, those things are nasty. But that is a risk when you live in mountain areas is stuff like that happening. It's the same thing when you live in areas covered with a lot of snow in the mountains. You have always a risk of an avalanche. But it's a, it's a, it's a weird feeling being in an area. Next thing you know, the you know the what you thought was land underneath your feet start shifting and next thing you know you're you're heading down downhill or something i've i've experienced that a few times and stuff it's not really landslides but everyone's experienced stuff like that where you on wet embankments lose your footing and you just got to wait till the ride's over landslides it's uh, devastating it's a uh, hundreds and hundreds of ton of solid mass of stuff just moving all at once and yeah so i gotta remember all those people states and everything else and remember them in prayer with this uh this tragedy of this you know this weather front that came through hurricane but let's go ahead and get started into this bible study got a little bit to read only doing two chapters so that you know means it's uh, uh, not short chapters, not really long, kind of medium. I think we got 22 verses on one and 35 on the other. But let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so this one is uh, a psalm from King David. Uh, I couldn't find a title for psalms 104 so it, it might it might also be from david and since they already had the one list of the psalm of david then the next one is from the same it's possible but as i said i couldn't really find a title for it let's get started here 103 verse 1 bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, Neither will he keep his anger forever. Now, of course, I had to look up that word chide. Some of you may know what it means, but it's talking about uh, to scald or rebuke is what the definition of that means. It's like, but I thought I like reading old the old English books. Uh, well, especially King James. Get to learn some of these words that you never hear no more. And I said, like, you know, this is the problem. You know, I wasn't taught from the previous generations, so I'd have more knowledge before I had to start life. And so now I'm having to learn everything. And the good thing is we have the Internet today so we can research and learn a lot easier than what we used to. Used to be you had to have a dictionary and an encyclopedia and you had to even know that the word even existed. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's what the word chide means, to rebuke or scald, 
or scald or rebuke, either or, you know. And but we have to be very, we should be as Christians very happy about that. That God doesn't do that because, you know, the Bible says all fall short in the glory of the Lord. And it's very true. There's no one that can keep all the commandments and statutes. No one. And But we're not commanded to. We're commanded to understand that we can't do it without Christ. We today, the people today, cannot get into heaven without Christ. You know, that's why Christ walked this earth, God in human form, and died for our sins. Went through all that brutality and stuff so that we could be under grace. And it's really easy to get into heaven, but we have to accept Christ as our Savior. And if you don't really know what that means, Savior means he's the one that saves us. But also he's the one that rules over us. That we, you know, we have to do it his way. We have to follow him. He leads the way. We don't lead him. He leads us. But a Savior also is, is someone or... You know, easiest definition would be someone that did something for you to save you and you couldn't do it for yourself. There's no way you can save yourself from the pit, from hell. There's no way. You know, without Christ, you would not have any chance. And that's why he's our savior. We didn't ask him to do it. He done it of you know done it on his own accord. Most of us didn't even really know that we needed him. But if you're a Christian and been saved and born again and have the Holy Spirit, you are very, very grateful and blessed at what he did. But it's really, really also very sad that he had to go through what he did for us. You know, that part, I just it's very devastating to me. But anyways, let's continue on. Verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Now, to be rewarded something does not always mean a good thing. Um, what it means in this is uh, um, giving us what we should have gotten for our for doing wrong. You know, that's you know, pretty much being punished for the wrong that we did. On earth, we do a lot of things wrong in the eyes of God, which were not really wrong in society. But we have to remember that one sin keeps us out of heaven. Only one. You break one one time, that's it. If you're trying to do it on your own, none of us can do it. No one on earth has ever been able to do it. That's why we have grace. Now, of course, here in Old Testament, they had the law and stuff, which we're not under anymore. But we're still under commandments and statutes and his guidance. We still have to do it his way. We're just not under the Israelite law. Now all can come to the Lord. You don't have to be an Israelite only. But let's continue on here. Verse 11. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to, you know, what do they say, beat, beat a dead horse. <laughs> I don't want to be on one area too long. It's like people, some people are just like, come on, get on, let's go. 
But yeah, I do that too sometimes. Like, come on, we got it. Move on. Verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. Now the other part we're sitting there talking about, you know, the ones that, you know, that fear the Lord. I've mentioned this before, I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. This is something that deserves to be repeated as many times as possible because a lot of people don't seem to understand this God in Christ is love but they are also wrath and we have to understand that if God puts his wrath towards us or towards our lives that is something you do not want to be rewarded your iniquities that's what that's kind of mean. It's like you do not want the God's wrath to come against you. It's, uh, yeah, just, it's, uh, very bad. Is a, uh, is that's an understatement. <laughs> that's why we're to also fear the Lord. We don't want to anger the Lord. I know some of us, myself, guilty of this as well. We push sometimes. We push our boundaries with that. And that's why God's a great, you know, he understands a lot. He understands what's your normal and what isn't your normal. He knows your heart. So when life's getting to you and you lost your top and this, that, and the other, and you just start ranting and stuff and even getting mad at God because of things, he knows it's not your normal. If it is your normal, you want to change that. You know. But let's continue on here. Verse 16. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. And it says here, Old Testament, New Testament, all says keep commandments and statutes. And so I've went over multiple times, you know, the, the, was it four or five parts of the law that no longer stand, but everything else still does. You got the dietary, uh, circumcision, dietary, sacrifices, uh, punishments, and the added laws to the Sabbath. So I guess it's all four. Everything else still stands. This is stuff that's not being taught. Is all the stuff that still stands that we should be doing. But remember, if we do these things, it's not really for God to rule over us. It's so we actually have better civilizations and better lives. You know, but continue on verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
and that's 103. So now we're doing 104. Yeah, I think this one's pr pretty much, I mean, the, the, both of these are pretty straightforward. Self-explanatory of a lot. And so if you remember the basic stuff about which doesn't stand a day and that means everything else still does. It's a... Uh, it makes things easier to understand. So, 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now I would say this is David as well. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain? who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment the water stood above the mountains at thy rebuke they fled at the voice of thy thunder they hasted away they go up by the mountains they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over that they return not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of, of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nest, as for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The, hill, the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. Now, if you've never watched Lord of the Rings and understand what a coney is, <clears throat> that's a type of rabbit. Um, yeah, that's what uh, Schmeagol or Gollum, you know, brought up there. You know, for them, he's going to make a stew. Samwise Gimshi took him to make a stew. But, you know, that's what you... Anyways, continue on. 19. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together, and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work, and to his labor until the evening. Now some people don't know, won't understand this, but you know we didn't have light switches throughout all of history of the world. So when it got dark, people didn't work. They didn't do anything. They went to bed. And so, 
we have to remember that with technology, sometimes it adds to our sorrows. So instead of having the evenings off to sleep in or whatever, we've made our lives a lot busier chasing the dollars so that we can live life. But, you know, life was not meant, was not meant to be as hard as we make it. But whenever we chase the world instead of chasing God, it ends up that way. Let's continue on verse 24. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wild sea, wherein, all, wherein are things creeping and numberable both small and great beasts. Now back to the part where the earth is full of thy riches, we have to remember, God says you are rich if you have food, clothing, and shelter. The earth provides everything that you need. A lot of people says, you know, earth full of riches, they're thinking of rare stones and gold and silver and stuff to make money from. God doesn't like money. He hates money. He says the love of money is the root to all evil. And he's very true. Very, very true with that saying. You live long enough, you see how people in society will sell out their own families for a little bit of money. A little bit of fame. You know, or the promise thereof. It's, uh, yeah, the earth is full of thy riches, but he's not meaning money. <laughs> Let's continue on. Verse 26. There go the ships. There is the Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. Of course, we're talking about the oceans here still. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them they gather, thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thy, thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die. And return to their dust. Now, of course, when he's speaking, it says that thou givest, or that they, you know, like we go back, uh, like on you know, 27, you know, everything on earth waits upon God. That's when he says these, talking about the Lord. You know, we don't eat without God giving us food. If God takes away the rain, we don't have crops. We don't have grass. We don't have animals. We don't have anything without rain. That's what always baffles me when people want to live in the desert and say they want to they live off the land or whatever. It's like, you know, you're inviting bad things to happen to your life. You're, you're, you're... <laughs> You are have a lot of faith in that public water system, because. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it can all change on a dime. But you have to remember that you know when he's talking about you know thou givest them they gather, thou openest thy hand they are filled with you know this is like you know what we gather to eat. You know, when you go being, in uh, and these times people still went out in the forest and gathered. They were still gatherers. They went and found fruit trees and nut trees and, you know, dates and plums and whatever else out there. Anything that they can collect for food. Or they went into the field that they planted themselves and gathered. But the field didn't grow unless God gave them water. Or gave them knowledge on how to 
uh, divert some water from a river to fill the fields. But anyways, you know, if God hides his face, we're in trouble. Now, if, if, God, if God isn't uh, looking upon you and guiding you, then you're on your own. And that is not something you want to be in life. There's a lot of people living that way today, and they are in complete misery. They can even have all the possessions in the world, and they still are miserable. They just, they loathe everything. And of course, he takes away air, we die. So, if you didn't really understand these little sections of this, uh, with my dyslexia, it messes with me and stuff. So it is reading it started getting a little confusing to me. I just didn't want it to be confusing for someone else. If somebody says, hey, I got this, what are you doing? Okay, you're not the only one that may be hearing this because there may be people out there with dyslexia like me that need a little help of understanding what they're reading, especially Old English. But let's continue on verse 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Of course, you know, we know that God, you know, life doesn't exist on earth, especially in humans, unless God creates them. I mean, I know a man and woman come together and produce a child, but God has to give that child a soul. And God gave a soul to all of us. As God says, you know, while we were still in the womb, he knew us continue on with the last bit of this uh, uh, chapter here. 31. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. And of course, that's the end of this lesson. And, uh, so pretty much every bit of that stands today. Except this part on 35 says, let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. We're to pray for those people today and pray that they get right with God. We're to try to educate them. We're to spread the gospel. That's what I'm doing with this channel here, the Bible study, and also spreading the gospel. So... But the rest of all that stands still today. But I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We're already past the 30 minute mark. Almost coming up on 34 that is. Just check the time. So I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. Hope you enjoyed it. And But remember we got to pray. We got to pray for ourselves. We got to pray for the lost. That's them sinners and wicked. And most of us know there's some people that aren't going to be saved. Most won't be. The Bible even says many who call the Lord their Lord will be cast into the lake of fire. They will be proclaiming, but Lord, I did these things in your name. And he will say, depart from me, you doer of iniquity, for I never knew you. There's a lot of people thinking that they can get into heaven by doing works. And you can't. You can't do it without the gift that Christ gives us. But we still have to do it his way. So we also got to pray for ourselves to make sure that we're right with the Lord. That we have the Holy Spirit. That we know without a shadow of a doubt that we're good to go. Because the devil is going to play... You know, horrible things with your brain. He, Satan plays games a lot. 
He wants you to always doubt. He does it to me all the time. I know for a fact I was gifted the Holy Spirit, and I know for a fact that I desire to follow the Lord. I'm not successful in it all the time. And that's the part about being in a sinful human flesh. We're not going to be successful all the time. But we are to keep trying. That's what God wants us to do. That's having a heart for the Lord. We desire to follow the Lord. That's what he wants from us. But yeah, but prayer, that's very crucial. Talking to God all day long, every day. You gotta remember the Bible commands us to pray everywhere. And if you're a woman, you're to, you are a, to adorn a head covering when you pray and prophesy, and a man is not to adorn a head covering while praying and prophesying. But we're to remember, we're to pray everywhere. Before anybody starts thinking bad about that, those are rules from Christ. Those are part of his commandments and statutes. So, yeah, Jesus never took away any of the rules of the woman from Old Testament. In fact, he added to them. But he also added to the, the man. He didn't take away the basic rules of uh, for what it was, what it is to be a man. But he did add to it. So there's more commandments and statutes other than just Old Testament. When we get to New Testament and stuff, you'll start hearing them more and be like, really? So yeah, these are things we're commanded to, to do, to put in, you know, to do in our lives Daily. Ways we're supposed to be. Yeah, I wish I was, wish I could have the knowledge I have today and go back to being a teenager. Instead of trying to chase girls like we're all taught, all us boys are taught to do as teenagers. You know, we've got to remember God commands we're not even to date till a man is ready to be a husband and a father. Dating is to seek a wife. We're not to seek a wife till we are ready to be a husband and father. I'm like, I wish I would have been taught this stuff. I would have been focusing more on myself and making myself a better person instead of trying to win the hearts of someone that didn't want me anyways. Or I wouldn't be single today. Nevertheless, as I said, we're to teach the next generation so that they're better than the previous we got to get back to that. It's very crucial. But also, once again, in your prayers, remember everybody's suffering from the hurricane that went through. You know, it's, uh, I lived out in Arizona. You had the flash floods that can happen out there, and those were very devastating. For the fact is, you wouldn't even be getting rain and then a flood come because it rained up north in Flagstaff. The Grand Canyon area and stuff like that, they got a lot of rain. And you didn't get none. You didn't even see a cloud in the sky. Next thing you know, you got the little uh, dry rivers. A bunch of water starts coming through. And then boom, it starts, you know, first you have a little bit of water, then it grows, 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 and... People got killed in those a lot or got stranded in them because they tried to drive through them thinking, oh, it's just a little water. And yeah, whatever. But, yeah, f floods, flash floods, landslides. I mean, this stuff's all devastating. It's just, it's, it comes upon so quickly. I said that's what happened to a lot of people in the Asheville area and stuff like that. It's like the, Water came down from the mountain and started filling these other areas, but it's so much at one time. It filled up their rivers and creeks and streams to where they're all just one big glob of water flow. and It hits fast. Sometimes too fast for you to respond. But yeah, so remember all of them in your prayers as well. And remember the world. 
the world's a powder keg right now. We got nations really wanting to try to take over other nations. You got everybody just chewing at the bit, ready to go to war. And it's uh, it's not it's not a good thing to be in this situation right now. But. It's understandable that it happens because so much of the world follows Satan today. They just, everyone keeps forgetting about God. God wants us to live peaceful, unified lives. But we must be with like minded for that to happen. And we must be under God. Because if you're under Satan, Satan doesn't believe in peace. If you're under God, he wants nothing but peace. But, yeah, so. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.